COVID-19 vaccines can help save lives, but many people are still hesitant to get that jab. Yeah, take a look at this map. 57.1% of the U.S. population is fully vaccinated. Now, when looking at just people over the age of 18, that number becomes approximately 69%. Now, while it's great that more than half of the U.S. population is fully vaccinated, vaccine hesitancy is slowing down our chances of reaching herd immunity and returning to some kind of normalcy. Dr. Melanie Cornides, an epidemiologist at the University of Pennsylvania School of Nursing, joins us now to discuss all things vaccine. Good morning, doctor. So just first tell us, where does vaccine hesitancy come from? And we're saying hesitancy, not anti-vax, because a lot of people who are hesitant about this vaccine have received plenty of other vaccines throughout their lives, vaccinated their children, but now they're hesitant about this one. Walk us through that. Uh, good morning. Thank you for having me. That's absolutely correct. Um, vaccine hesitancy is the right way to phrase it because it's a behavior and many people out there have concerns that are specific to the COVID vaccine and they may have accepted other vaccines in the past. Vaccine hesitancy isn't new. It's actually been around for a long time as far back as the smallpox vaccine, and it comes from a place of concern about most often side effects of the vaccine. So we've been seeing concerns about vaccines whenever they come out, when they're new, such as with the HPV vaccine or the chickenpox vaccine, that it's too new, that there's a concern about long-term side effects, that it hasn't been tested. And that's exactly what we're seeing with the COVID vaccine as well. And Dr. Cornelius, you've done a lot of research on this. What impact do you think misinformation has had on vaccine acceptance or fueling this hesitancy or reluctance? Unfortunately, it's had a huge impact on uh, fueling vaccine hesitancy. So there's a lot of misinformation that's circulating out there, and it's all sort of driving this concern around safety and side effects. Um, we've been seeing a lot of the same things that we saw with other vaccines, this concern over long-term side effects, the concern that we don't know what's going to happen, and it's driving people to want to wait and see, to see what's going to happen, to hold off, and um, to see, you know, let's wait and see what's coming down the road. Um, it's also this sort of concerns over misinformation that we've seen, such as um, around fertility or around um, other sort of uh, different things that we've seen on social media. So I think that that is causing people to be reluctant to get the vaccine. Um, mm -hmm. Absolutely. Now, I think something important to note here, especially as we're talking about boosters and needing, you know, another shot is that getting vaccinated does not make you completely bulletproof. You know, there are still these breakthrough cases. So walk us through why people should still get vaccinated, even though they're hearing, hey, people got the shot, they're still getting COVID, or people got the shot, now they need another shot. Tell us what it does, even if it means you might get a breakthrough case and why it's important. Actually, that's a great question. And what we know is that uh, getting vaccinated protects you against all forms of COVID. So in the beginning, it protects you against mild, moderate, and severe COVID. Um, and then after about, depending on which shot you get, from three to five months, it protects you continuously against moderate to severe COVID. So if you do get a breakthrough case, if you're vaccinated, you're, you're highly unlikely to get moderate to severe COVID. You're not going to end up in the hospital. You're not going to die from COVID. Um, so that's a great reason to get vaccinated. Um, you're also less likely to um, get sick and to transmit the um, virus to others, and then you're going to have a shorter case of COVID. So that's a great reason to get vaccinated because you don't want to transmit the, the virus to others, and you're not going to have such a severe case. Absolutely. Dr. Cornelius, thank you so much for sharing your expertise and having this important conversation with us that we will keep having. Good to see you. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Follow today's top stories and breaking news by downloading the NBC News app.